Hey everybody, welcome to LettermanRow.com. I am Jeremy Birmingham. This is Bermanology, where we, uh, as usual, are talking to Ohio State commitments, recruits, targets from around the country. Uh, the last handful of weeks, we've been looking ahead to the class of 2022, trying to break that down position by position. This week, however, I want to uh, dial it back a little bit, go back to the class of 2021 and one of the ringleaders of the class of 2021 as the Buckeyes prepare for what could be a pretty important weekend in Columbus uh, Jalen Johnson from Cincinnati LaSalle High School. Jalen, thanks for taking time to join the show again. It's been a while since we have spoken to you uh, on the on the show. How are things? How are you? How is everything? Um, life's going pretty good right now. Football is going great. My grades are always above par. I'm, I have a 94%, so that's pretty good. Um, but I'm just ready to get to Columbus, honestly. That's the only thing that's on my mind. Columbus is state and another state ring. Let's start with uh, the state part. How is your senior season going? Obviously, it's a little bit different than normal. There's only the six-game regular season. Now everyone's in the playoffs. Where do things stand for you and uh, your teammates? Um, to be honest, people haven't really seen our full potential yet because every week we've had kids miss because of COVID outbreaks in our school and certain reasons. So, like, our team hasn't fully played together yet. With our season, it's been pretty good. We've faced adversity versus Cathedral. We went down there right before the game. 15 players were told they couldn't play. We played with sophomores, juniors, young bugs got in there. We lost by nine to a pretty good Indy Cathedral team. Um, week two, we lost to X senior night. Really, 10-17, but they scored with like a minute left in the fourth. Yeah. Um, our chances of winning state are pretty high. Honestly, if we can have our full team, we can execute. I don't think no one in the city can beat us in Division Two. And when we get to teams like Toledo Central Catholic and Wander Ridge, those teams I don't think have enough power this year to beat us either. With all our deep backs coming back, you know, uh, I think it's interesting, Jalen. And I, 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 you know, that I never, I never like script where these conversations go. So I, if you don't feel like talking about it, I understand, but. From a, a young guy's perspective, I mean, you, you know, you guys are seeing this COVID-19 pandemic unfold sort of in real time. You're seeing the way that it impacts your season. The way, uh, What are you doing as a player? I mean, how do you avoid getting – how do you avoid testing positive? And when you watch 15 players on your team go through that, like, are you guys shaking your head like is this isn't – it shouldn't be a big deal for your great for your group. I mean, for for your age. I mean, I'm just curious what the the response is from kids who are you know according to the numbers here almost 100 percent safe uh, if they do test positive. But like, how 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 hard is it to take this seriously? And what are you guys doing uh, personally? I guess to to stay healthy. Um, this virus is very serious. Um. If you get it, it nearly kills 6% of the population who gets it. So you should take this a lot serious. They said recently it's worse than the flu. So, you know, we take it at a high cost. Like at school, you mask up. We all sit in certain desks. Um, actually, our, no, no one on our team has tested positive for COVID. In, week, in, out, no tests, no positive cases. But kids from our school catch outbreaks. So if a player sits next to them, therefore they have to quarantine for 14 days. Our coaches remind us heavily, vitamins, mask up, stay safe if you want to have another game. That's pretty now, That's pretty yeah. crazy. That's pretty crazy. No, Nobody on your team has tested positive, yet you're still being forced to play without 15 players. That, that has to be a challenge just from a, a mental standpoint because you guys are doing everything the right way individually, but yet you're still it's still out of your hands. Well, it's a lot of things you can't control, but the things we can control, we take it step by step, day by day. We get through it as a team. Or can we came in this one, we're gonna leave this one. That's how we look at it look at it at this point of view or the perspective. You know, I think uh, obviously then you guys can understand as recruits individually why college programs around the country are, are handling this the way they are, which is you know, they're not really fighting for the dead period to be over because they understand one 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 outbreak can potentially eliminate a chance at a national championship. How are the coaches at Ohio State addressing this with you guys as a group? And what's been their message about, hey, you know, we wish you could come to campus, but this is why you can? Or how are they handling that? 
Um, we know as a collective group that we know we can't be on the campus because Ohio State has to do so many things, and a Big Ten as a collective group has to do so many things to get football back. So we really understand, like, we can't put it pressure on them to let us come up to campus. No, we can't do that. That's not right. What we can do is follow what they tell us to do, wear a mask, everywhere we go, stay six feet, social distance. If you're going to hang out, please wear a mask. Like Ohio State, I don't think anyone's tested positive recently for the COVID testing. Uh, and so next weekend, uh, you know, you guys, you and 16 of the other commitments in your class or 15 of the other commitments in your class, uh, Tristan Lee come into town from Virginia, five-star offensive lineman. You guys are going to be spending the weekend hanging out at Jack Sawyer's house in Pickerington. As a group, how important is this Buckeyes bash for you? Um, as a group, it's more than just like a weekend together. We've been talking about this for a minute. We really built a brotherhood. So, like, we only want serious inquiries only, and we've let every commit and every recruit that wants to come notice, like, we're not like Oklahoma or LSU where we're just trying to get you to commit because we want you on our team to a five star. We want you to commit because you actually like the place, because you actually want to be a part of the brotherhood. We don't want to force you to do something you're not a part of. So this Buckeye Bash is pretty important to us. We all get to hang out for the first time in a while and have some fun. As one of the, like I said at the start of the show here, one of the ringleaders of the group, like I don't think a lot of people truly understand the impact that you've had, Jalen, in helping build this class. You were instrumental in the addition and the a flip of Jordan Hancock from Clemson. What was it about that relationship with Jordan that made you feel like, hey, there's something here, this relationship that you guys as a collective group had with him was strong enough to pull him away from Clemson. Because as you know, like nobody decommits from Clemson. Um, to be honest, I just treated Jordan like he was one of my best friends. Um, I knew during the time he was going through a hard time. It's like I always talk to him, check up on him week in, week out, make sure he's great. Mm -hmm. After he was originally a silent commit to Ohio State. But once he told me his situation with his mother understood, like you had to stay close to home. Well, like, I'll just talk to him and tell him, you know, we always miss you. You're always welcome back to Ohio State. We'll never forget about you. I told him, um, make a decision that's right for you. I don't want you to be under no pressure. Make this decision because you want to be a Buckeye. And he told me, like, he always wanted to be a Buckeye. He always wanted to play for Ohio State. Funny, when Ohio State lost to Clemson, he was actually upset. But um, as a group, we all came close with Jordan. Brought him in as our brother, and we still accept him, even though he committed to Clemson and then decommitted and came to Ohio State. I think it's it speaks volumes about the recruiting process and how unique and individualized it is for you guys. Because here's Jordan Hancock, a kid from an hour and a half away from Clemson, right? Always liked Ohio State, committed to Clemson. Flipped to Ohio State. Someone that you treat like a brother. Here's Devontae Smith, who's – you're related to, who lives an hour and a half away from Ohio State, commits to Ohio State, commit, and then flips to Alabama. I mean, how different is the process for each person? And I don't know, I, I, maybe you can't answer this for me, but I'm sure you've gotten to talk to a lot of your peers over the last handful of months. Like, do you see that this thing is just a wild card for every person individually or are there are there selling points or talking points that are the same no matter what um honestly it's ever it's wherever you're destined to be at like if you feel like you made the wrong mistake once you don't want to make that mistake again so this recruitment is really a uh playing a ballpark you got to make the right play at the right time and if you mess up you rarely get another chance to fix it like with Devonte. To this day, he's still my best friend. He will always, always will be. If he plays for Oklahoma, Oregon, Bama, stays in Bama, wherever, he will always be my best friend. That's his decision. Our number one goal is to make it to the NFL. No matter where you go, make it to the NFL. So this recruitment plays a lot, but the bonds you make with the recruiters and commits is a huge, is an even better road for you to commit to a certain school. I honestly, that's why I think Jordan came to us. He got closer with us than any other Clemson commit except Barrett Carter, which is his close friend. And have, let's just – let's put a cap around that. You guys have given up the the race for Barrett Carter, correct? Um, as we say, Barrett is brainwashed. <laughs> Let me, let's uh, turn the tide here a little bit if I can, Jalen. What 
What are you at right now? Height, weight, et cetera. You know, what are Buckeyes fans getting from you as a football player? The last time we really spoke, I said, was really um, right after you committed. There's been a lot of chirping from people that maybe you're going to end up sliding down and playing linebacker, blah, blah, blah. Who is Jalen Johnson, the player, as a senior in high school? Jalen Johnson, the player as a senior in high school, is an athlete on his team. I play every position every week. It's a different scheme. So certain weeks, my team will use me as safety. Like, for example, we run defenses like Seattle Seahawks run and how the Los Angeles Chargers would run. With some weeks, I would be like the Derwin James type of kid where I'm back reading the defense. Next week, I might be like Jamal Adams where I'm right behind the linebackers, but I'm still in the box to play the run and pass second. Some weeks, they just blitz me the whole game. So wherever my team puts me, that's why I play. I'm a, the bullet or the adjuster on the field, but I can play either or. What is the conversation with Al Washington, with Kerry Combs, with Matt Barnes, with Ryan Day about how they see that you know, uh, developing into their defense because obviously they play a lot of guys who are multiple and, and can play all over the field. I mean, is that one of the, the, the keys here in your recruitment? Um, Honestly, I see myself with Coach Combs because I see myself like Court Williams. Court Williams is going to play this year. He's a 6'2", 225 safety, but he can play in and out the box depending on what defense we play. Like Ohio State is a pretty good mastermind school, so they're going to switch it up. So if the Coach Washington needs me to play in the box, I'm here for you. If Coach Combs needs me to play out the box, play in safety, I'm here for you. Honestly, wherever they put me is where I'm playing. I won't argue with it. Is there a specific Columbus restaurant that you're most excited to get back to uh, this coming weekend for the Buckeyes Bash? Um, not really. I haven't really been to any good Columbus restaurants. I've been to Hooters. I said Hooters. Roosters they have here down here. I've been in Canes. They have Canes, Chick-fil-A. But I heard they have this pretty good pizza spot that I want to try out. So I'm going to go give it a chance. Is there... One or two of you guys in the class that is going to be most entrusted to recruit Tristan Lee and any other non-committed player who shows up next weekend, or is this going to be a everyone's gathering, we're all playing Madden, we're all doing whatever? Like, What are you guys going to do in Columbus because you're not going to be on campus itself? Well, we're going to spend the first half of the day, you know, trying to recruit people, trying to get people to commit, flip possibly. But the second half of the day, it's, it's time for the boys. We're going to have a boys' night out, just chill, eat some wings, watch some games. Well, you know, that um, sort of thing is is um, interesting to watch because there's so many things that uh, can happen on the field at any given week um, with Ohio State, with the Big Ten, with the SEC. Knowing that Ohio State's going to be back on the field did you think that it was going to happen? Like, as a recruit, what was the feeling like as you were watching um, the SEC and the ACC and the Big 12 beginning to, to you know, get ready to play football while the Big 10 was not? Was there like a – was it? were you angry? Were you annoyed? Were you confused? What was the right f emotion? Well, I really didn't have an emotion because if you think about it, I'm not trying to be cocky, but what is football with Ohio State? Like, let's be honest now. No disrespect to the smaller schools, but when you think of Power Five schools, Bama, Clemson, LSU, Florida, Ohio State, Penn State, even some arguably that you can argue with. So after I saw the 2020 commits, parents write that letter to the Big Ten, and after I saw Justin Fields make that statement on Twitter, I knew Ohio State would have football. It was too many people trying to vote so we can execute our plans of having a national championship this year. Because I do believe this is the year we will win. Do you think that seeing, again, I never know how these conversations are going to go, so I'm just going to keep riding with it. As you guys watched a player like Justin Fields step up and, and become a real leader, um, not just for Ohio State football, but for college football in such a weird time, does it change the way that you think that your voice can be heard as a player moving forward? Um, anyone's voice is important. You never know. One small word can make a big change, as you can see. You don't have to be a popular kid to make a statement known. So that did change because now we were talking about in our group. One says one big thing. It gets around. Boom. LeBron says it. LeBron retweets it. Boom. Everyone sees it now. LeBron is very popular with Ohio State. So we knew 
with Justin Fields and all those other players said that, that Ohio State will be back. Well, uh, look, man, we really appreciate you taking time. I know with the, the big weekend coming up, it's it's a, a key one for you and the, and the uh, Buckeyes recruiting class of 2021. Good luck as you continue uh, fighting for a state championship. And uh, thanks for taking time to be on the show again. Yes, sir. That is Jalen Johnson. I am Jeremy Birmingham. This has been Bermanology on Letterman Row. Thanks for watching, everyone. And we will catch you out, check you out again next week. Bye-bye.